So, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome. Welcome to the Great Lakes of Iowa. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. And welcome today to the fourth weekend in the season of Advent, a season of hope and expectation, a season of preparation, a season where we hear good news for people who are experiencing troubled times. And that good news, honestly, is an unfailing love that is made available to us all the way from heaven, a love that we can count on, and a love that's real. So thank you for being a part of this service today. Why don't we begin our time in God's presence with our gathering hymn. <clears throat> in the lowly ones of this earth. Enlighten us with your grace that we may sing of your advent among us in the word made flesh. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit whose forgiveness is sure, and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O oh God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew each day in the love of and the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free. Free from all that holds you back. Free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love and comforted by Christ's peace and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is our prayer for the day. I can offer these words on behalf of us all. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come with your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly 
we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In this announcement, Luke makes clear that God comes with good news for ordinary people from little-known places. The king will not be born to royalty in a palace, but to common folk in a stall. Here Luke highlights the role of the Spirit, a special emphasis in this gospel. The gospel reading is from Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at this saying, and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon me, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child will be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, the intent will have my own servant, and her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. Well, this is God in So, Advent, it's all about a love that is unfailing. A love that we can count on through thick and thin. A love that we can depend on no matter what. What feels like it is separating you these days from the love of God or let me put it to you like this if there's truly nothing that will break the bonds of God's love for you what bold step would you be willing to take Romans chapter 8 verses 38 and 39 listen to how Paul puts it for I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Honestly. That is what unfailing love looks like. It is what Advent gives us hope in. The Great Plague was London's last major outbreak of the bubonic plague, but it claimed as many as 100,000 lives from 1665 to 1666. It spread to the Derbyshire village of Eam, about 160 miles north of London, in a bale of cloth infested with carrier fleas. 42 villagers died in September and October. The plague had been killing 
millions of Europeans for centuries. These villagers didn't understand all of the science, but they knew the plague spread from person to person. By spring, the remaining citizens prepared to flee their homes in order to survive. But the newly appointed rector, William Mompesson, with the help of the trusted former rector, Thomas Stanley, convinced the villagers to remain and to quarantine themselves in the village. By staying, they all knew that they were choosing death, but they knew that they would also avoid spreading the plague to other villages. They chose to protect the lives of others beyond their own boundaries. Death hit Eam hard, killing 260 of its three to 800 inhabitants in a year. It must have been terrifying, but every single family would have had that strong belief in God, in an unfailing love for them that they could count on and depend on, and they wouldn't have feared death. Joan Plant, E.M. Church Warden and direct descendant of one of the survivors told the BBC. The citizens of E.M. must have clung to the truth of Paul's words, that nothing in all the universe or even in eternity can come between us and the love that God wants to make real to us in the person of his son, not even death. Despite suffering, despite grief, they chose to love and to protect their neighbors in nearby villages even more than themselves. They knew that they were held firmly in the embrace of God's love, no matter what, because God's love was an unfailing love. So what is it that feels like it is separating you these days from the love of God? Or if I may ask it like this, if there truly is nothing that will break the bonds of God's love for you, what bold step, what courageous step would you be willing to take this very day? Advent, it's all about God's unfailing love for you. Amen. Let's listen to our hymn of the day.
fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone that we know is in need. Healing God, we know that we can count on you and your unfailing love to pour out mercy to all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we will hear our offering hymn. It is a Christmas carol, and we'll hear it. But as we listen to the music, we'll consider the offerings that we want to make to the Lord, the ministry of this church, and the people who are recipients of it depend on your offerings. So thank you. betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you can turn now to that piece of bread that you have sitting close by in a napkin. You can pick that up, you can eat the whole thing, or you can just take a bite of it. You can do that right now, or you can do that after a bit. But when you do, you can know that this is the body of Christ given for you. Likewise, you can pick up the small cup that's in front of you or close by. And the juice, the wine, whatever you've got in that cup, you can take a sip or you can drink the whole thing and when you do you can know that this is the blood of Christ shed for you the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and now may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the 
Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's listen to our sending hymn. of his son Jesus Christ that's right the baby born in that teeny tiny little manger on that cold cold night in Bethlehem all those years ago that ladies and gentlemen boys and girls is what unfailing love looks like so what feels like it is separating you from the love that God has for you? Or if there truly is nothing that can break the bonds of God's unfailing love for you, what bold step, what courageous move might you be inclined to make today. Thank you for being a part of this service of worship. Now go in peace and prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.